Welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Jim Hacking. And I'm Tyson Mutrix. What's up, Jimbo? Oh, Tyson, it's good to be back. We haven't recorded in a while. I just noticed that our episode with John Day was released, and I was like, man, we just recorded that. So I know that means that we don't have many in the can. I know we have a full day of recording today, so I'm excited to spend the day with you. Yeah, it usually means one of two things. Either it was bumped up, which sometimes we do, we bump them up, or it's we have we have very few in the can, which is it sounds like that's where <laughs> where we are. So could be could we, be both because it was a great episode and it's summertime, so sometimes we the 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 bounty runs a little low. That's that's very true, very true. Um, what you up to these days? How you doing? Well, I'm looking at so one of my uh, YouTube subscribers sent me. A bag of Dungeons and Dragon dice. I'm very excited about it. I can do the sound if you want to hear it. And you might say to yourself, Jim, why do you have? Yes, why... that's that's exactly what I want to know. Why do you have Dungeons and Dragons dice? I made a comment on the show, on my live show, a couple weeks ago about how I really wish I had a twenty sided die, because people call me up on the show, and they have some cockamamie immigration plan that's really really dumb. And I say to them, well. You have a you have a five percent chance of this going really, really badly, or you have a ten percent chance of this going really, really badly. So I wanted to have dice to represent to say, okay, let's play a game. You're gonna throw out a number, I'm gonna roll the dice, and if you hit, that means you're getting deported or you're gonna be stuck outside the United States. And that scares the shit out of people. They're like, No man, don't throw that die. Don't throw that. I don't wanna see that. So somebody just they they didn't identify who they were, but they said, Here are the dice for you. I, I like it. Well, you know what? Now that we're we're going to do a little show and tell. So Stephen McClellan sent me this cool little thing. Check oh, this out. Dude. So he's a good dude. For those of oh, you that can actually nice. see, um, this is a a piece of the airplane of the Spirit of St. Louis. He's a wow. pilot. I'm a pilot. And mm -hmm. it's really cool. So what they it, there's a little description. Um, when they, they used to, for the wings, they used to use fabric, right? Not aluminum. Um, and so it's a piece of the fabric from the plane, which is pretty cool. So that's awesome. Um, yes. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, really appreciate it. That's, that's awesome. But all right, let's get, I want to make sure we don't have time for our topic today. Cause I think it's a good one. Do you want to introduce the topic? Today I want to talk about perfectionism. And, you know, as of the time of this recording, we have about 200 law firm owners in the guild. Obviously we have thousands of other uh, law firm owners in the big group and who listen to the podcast. And I have to say that one of the things that I see really holding people back is perfectionism. And I would define perfectionism as sort of an overarching, debilitating fear to get started because you're not going to be able to do it perfectly or exactly right forever. And I think it really is a hurdle for a lot of people. And I thought it would make an interesting topic for our show today. I think it's, I think it's a, a, a beautiful topic and it's funny. Um, sometimes these topics, they track, actually, I would say not sometimes, usually the topics track what's going on in our lives. And I think this is an interesting one because both of us, uh, are, are J Jason Selk is coaching both of us right now. Uh, and, um, perfectionism is one of those things that he he talks about quite a bit because that pct is is very 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 bad and i i would agree with you and it's it's i would say that the perfectionism is many times the things that it stops people from launching and launching not just meaning the firm but launching anything any idea that they have um any any special project hiring people starting their firm you name it, they want everything to be lined up just right. And the reality is, is that that's not the right way of going about things. Um, but it, it is a, it's a massive block. Wouldn't you say like, would you say that's the number one block for people? I don't know if I would say number one, but would you? I'm a little biased because I'm a 10 quick start. So I sort of speed through those kinds of things, but, and so I, I might not be the most uh, accurate judge of that. But yes, I think it's it's certainly one of the top three things that hold law firm owners back, that fear of getting started um, versus just jumping right in. And I'm glad that you mentioned 
that half the time the things that we t- or even more so half the times we think of, we talk about issues on this show that are things that we've either struggled with or are currently struggling with so i i guess we should begin by talking about our own journeys with perfectionism how has it manifested for you and then and then i can share sort of what i've struggled with in my own weird way of perfectionism it's an interesting question. I didn't know you were going to ask me that, but I'm, I'm glad you did. I, I mean, I think that I think the way that probably early on the way it manifested the most is just probably beating myself up too much over things that I should have been really happy about. And instead, I, I picked on the small things. And that's that's that is one of those symptoms of that perfectionism where you'll do something really, really well. Um, let, and we'll just, let's just use, we'll, we'll, we'll go with a ba- it's baseball season. Let's go with a, with a, a baseball analogy. Let's say that you have an amazing game and you, let's say you were three for four, right. And you had, let's see a triple, a double and a single like, oh, and, and you did great in the field, but on that one at bat, you struck out like at the end of the day, you focus on and, and I would say I was really bad about this whenever I was, when I played uh, baseball growing up where I'd have an amazing game and I would talk about that one thing that happened. And I would, so I would say that that's probably where it manifested the most is not, and, and that's not just in baseball, but like throughout my life, that's, that's probably where it's manifested the most is when it comes to perfectionism. What about you? So for me, this isn't going to surprise you because you know how I run in streaks and you know, I'll have a great streak going. I'll be doing everything right the way that I want to do it. And then I'll have one bad day. And then I'm like, fuck it. I want to, I want to stop. I'm never going to do that again. Right? Like that's really how perfectionism holds me back is that if I, if I, the, the goal of perfectionism defeats the satisfaction of getting the, you know, the wins, the small wins. I mean, I remember when I read in relentless solution focus, where there was a hockey player who was struggling with drinking and Jason said to him, well, why, why don't you just drink one night a week? And I was like, one night a week, one night. Well, that'll break his streak. Like then, then that'll be, that'll be bad. And so, yeah, this is something that, that really uh, I've struggled with and still struggle with. Yeah. Um, I, and it's, it's funny about you. Like you'll be very passionate about something one way or the other. And I'll just, Let's just wait a week. <laughs> Let's just wait a week. We'll we'll see what we'll see how Jim feels next week. And if Jim feels the same way in a week, all right. Well, then then uh, then he's really committed to whatever that thing is. Um, so but, so let's no, let's talk about. Let's, oh, go ahead. I know, no, it's, but but I was going to say you're you're right about it. But like, um, I think it's also important that there are so many people that preach. There's always like one way. Um, but what you just said is, is, is really important about like, there's no like one way, like you, you, you go in streaks. Some people don't like, there's no one way. So we're going to, we're going to talk about it a little bit, but just because we're saying one thing doesn't mean it's the way. Well, let, let's talk about something much more fun than how we've struggled with perfectionism. And that is how we see others struggling with perfectionism <laughs> because it's so much easier to talk about them over there versus us. But I mean, I was talking to a friend yesterday who wants to get into a consulting business and wants to start doing some social media and you know she wants it to be perfect she wants it to be um top notch she wants it to be high quality and those are all good things those are all good things unless six months later you're still talking about that and haven't created some damn content so i think that's that's the real test is that if you've if you've thought about doing a change or doing something new and you're in prep mode for that for a really really long time um so you know like it's like the classic story of the the law firm owner who can't announce their new firm venture unless they have the best logo that's ever been designed right or the best trade name for their law firm so it's just such it, a waste of time such yeah. a waste of time yeah so it's just it's it's sort of not realizing what the most important thing is which is just getting started, you know, a good example, you know, I have a, I have a YouTube live show with lots of people watching now. And I, I talk for an hour about immigration. And if you go back and look at my old videos, they're just so boring. And so, hi, I'm Jim. I'm an immigration lawyer today. Let's talk about citizenship. I mean, it could be no more boring. So you've got to get started so that you can get better. Yeah. And it's, it's really about 
it's really about making that progress. And, and so if you kind of just step back and think about the, the way you should really view your day is, okay, did I make progress today? Did I move the ball forward? Okay. And if you did, you need to, you need to celebrate that. It's, um, it's not whether like, it's, it's interesting. So we'll do these, these accountability calls in the guild and people will see the things that they're going to do on Monday. And then Friday, they'll come to our, the Friday call and they'll, they'll do all these amazing things. Right. And then they'll be like, but I didn't get it all done. So, you know, I'll give myself a five out of 10. Well, like, hold on a second. Like, did you, did you put in, a a, a a good amount of effort towards moving the ball forward. And like, sometimes they'll put like five, six hours into the thing, whatever the thing is. And they'll, they'll ma- have made a bunch of progress, but then they'll beat themselves up because they didn't get it done. And the reality is, is you're not going to get things done every week and every single day. It's, it's something that it takes time. Like some of these projects that we're doing as firm owners, they take several months, right? We've been, Kashev and I have been working on, uh, uh, this the most current project it won't get done until the end of september probably and if you really look, step back and the whole project has taken it's really a two and a half year project that we've been working on but it's something that we're working on regularly and it's bit by bit by bit and we're always making progress on it but um it, it really it just it eats me up whenever i see these law firm owners they're beating themselves up whenever they're making a ton of progress but then they're just they're just down on themselves because they didn't finish the thing, whatever the thing is. And that's just, just a really negative way of viewing things. I think another form of perfection is when a law firm owner says to themselves, well, everything has to be perfect before I do this, especially hiring, right? Everything, I, I have to have all this money in the bank account before I do that. If you find yourself using language like that, like, the stars have to align or I won't be able to take action. I mean, that to me is really where I see it manifesting itself a lot is that maybe it's a safety thing. Maybe it's a fear thing. Maybe it's, I don't want to go out on a limb, but you know, I hate to tell you part of running a law firm is the uncertainty of outcome. And if you, if you are really, really being limited by that, then maybe you want to have a job and not so much be running a law firm because running a law firm is a risk entailing venture. Yeah. Another one of those is, um, is I got to have all the video equipment. I've got, I've got to have all the right video equipment before I start doing videos and I've got to have, I've got to have all my scripts written. I've got to have all my topics. I've got to have all the best lighting, but in reality, Jim, what is your most valuable piece of video equipment? Probably this microphone and that camera. Okay, not expensive, most valuable. What's the one you What's the one you use the most often? It's oh, my made phone. A, your phone. That's right. Yeah. It's it, that it, it is. It's your phone. Like it is. I actually right now I'm recording this this episode. The camera is my is my phone camera. That's what I'm using. Camo is what I'm using, and it, it the the video is amazing on it. Yep. And we 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 overlook those things sometimes we well I, I think a good lesson is to look for the simplicity look for the simplicity in things as opposed to trying to make things so complicated uh, and if you can find that simplicity it's going to really help you combat that perfectionism you're listening to the maximum lawyer podcast our guest today is that mf for perfection and we're kicking mf for perfection to the curb Tyson, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about sort of how we break through perfectionism, sort of what are some tips that we can give to our listeners about how to move past perfectionism? Um, yeah, uh, the, I, I would say the, the number one thing, I think maybe the number one thing is celebrating your wins is, is maybe the number one, even, even if they're small, just finding a win. Um, even if you say, at the end of the day, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything to it. No, you did something. Like you did something. You, you you did something to move the ball forward, and celebrating those. those Why things. is that and, important? Uh, it, it's it's going to change the way you view things quite a bit, and it's it's going to it's going to make you appreciate the small progress that you make on a regular basis, and it's going to show. It's going to it's going to allow you to realize how you're watching things progress as you're, you, you're actually seeing things. And in, in, if you're taking that self-assessment, you're watching in real time as the ball is moving forward, how you're making progress inch by inch by inch on whatever that project is, whatever that thing is you're doing, you're actually able to stop 
in the middle of all the chaos of, of your life and say, Oh my, you know what? I am actually making progress on that. And it's going to, it's going to give you that boost of confidence that you really need uh, because confidence is, is the, is really the number one factor that you should be looking for is, is that confidence. Um, if you can boost that confidence, everything else will sort of fall into place. For me, when I find myself slipping into perfectionist tendencies, one of the things that really helps is just to take some action to do one little step, to do one thing. What can I do today or in the next 25 minutes or this hour? Not putting it off till tomorrow. Um, giving myself some wiggle room. I think sometimes I've really seen people, and I've, I've gone through this myself, where you get sort of, I always view it as a box inside of sand. Like you're in a, somebody has dug a box of sand in the sand for you and you're sort of trapped down in it and you, you gotta sort of start to wiggle free and you got to sort of, um, I think I've told you before about when my dad, we were canoeing down the Black River when I was a kid, and my dad got caught in some quicksand, and he started to sink. And my dad <laughs> was a man of quick action and hot temper, and so he wanted to just sort of like go crazy and get out. But what he did was he just stopped moving, and he found himself floating to the top. So I think about that when it comes to being stuck in that sand mass of perfectionism is that you've got to do something to just change it. Maybe it's... Maybe it's go for a run or get go to the spa or just do something to um, give yourself some freedom and some a little bit of movement so that you can get out of that box and then move towards where you want to be. You know, as as much of a routine guy as I am, I love the idea of pattern interrupt mm -hmm. where you you're you've got your routine, but then you say, you know what, I'm changing things up today. I'm gonna. I'm going to stop doing this thing and I'm going to go out and you know, like you, like you said, you know, go for a walk, go for a run. Maybe I, maybe I'm going to take this meeting outside and we're going to go on a walk mm -hmm. that the whole, the whole pattern interrupt can be very, very valuable. I think that's a whole episode for another day, but um, it I think is. that that's it probably is because the, the very first thing my therapist had me do when I, when I started seeing her years ago was to brush my teeth with my left hand. That was the very first thing, the very first homework assignment that I got was to brush my teeth with my left hand. And I think you're right. I mean, on Wednesdays, you know, I work out, I get up every morning at 420 to go to the gym to work out at five. On Wednesdays, I, I, I really go out on the edge and I say, you can sleep as long as you want on Wednesdays and Sundays. And now nine times out of 10, I get up somewhere between 430 and five, but I have been known to sleep longer. And I think, I think you have to build in those pattern interrupts to try to break up that routine and that monotony. As a quick time out what was the purpose of brushing your teeth with your left hand oh to, i mean first of all it triggers different synapses in your brain but i think more so it was just to to see things from a different point of view i mean try it try it tomorrow i mean when you do it you're just like well or, or you're left-handed aren't you i'm right-handed no I'm right yeah so try it with your left hand just see what just it it just feels weird it feels it feels a little yeah. different and, and it was about she knew that i mean back then i was in a lot of pain and a lot of um, discomfort and, and she knew that she wanted to push those buttons to try to see what, what shifts could be made. I actually, I can't wait to do this. Uh, you <laughs> mean, I'm, I'm, I'm into experimenting. You can do so it in your, you can do it in your ice freezer. Speaking yes, of pattern well, interrupts. I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to my tip. I'm going to get to oh, my tip oh. later. So that's, All that's right. going to be my tip of the week. So, uh, very good. All right. Any final words on this Jimbo? Well, as always, as always, be easy on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You don't need to listen to this episode and say to yourself, God damn it, I am a perfectionist, and then use that to keep yourself from taking action, right? So um, as with all things, a little progress is good. Just do what you can. Try to move the needle a little bit. If you need help, reach out in the big group. Join the guild. Talk to us. Reach out to Tyson or I. I mean, I was talking to a member yesterday who's struggling. It's not easy running a law firm. It's one of the hardest things you'll do besides raising kids. And I was thinking the other day we could do an episode on how running a law firm is like raising kids. But in general, I just want you to be your best to free yourself from whatever's holding you back. That's why Tyson and I started this podcast in the first place, why we started the Facebook group, why we started the guild so that people would have resources um, and a place to go that's optimistic, forward-looking, 
um, you know, wanting to improve, um, sort of drowning out the negative. And I really believe that with all the negativity that's going around, you need to surround yourself with people who, who don't subscribe to that, who don't give in to that. Um, the election cycle is heating back up again, and I find myself getting drawn back to Twitter. And I just got to remember that that stuff is just noise, and it keeps you from it keeps me and you from moving forward. Hundred uh, percent. Well said. It's not Twitter anymore. It's X. X. Oh yeah, is even bigger. New. That. Yes. Yeah. It's it's posts now. It's not tweets. It's posts. But all right, Jimbo. Let's wrap things up. Um, speaking of hanging out with. Uh, positive people. Uh, if you want to join us in the big Facebook group, join us there if you will. This is just if you're not in the Facebook group, you're listening to this. I think you're missing out on a ton of valuable content. Um, if you want a more high level conversation with more curated content, go to maxlawguild.com. We'd love to have you there. And if you get something from this podcast, we'd love for you to give us a five star review and help share the love. It helps spread the word to other law firm owners just like you. Jimmy, what's your hack of the week? In the last few weeks on LinkedIn and Facebook, I have seen people make posts where they sort of talk about things they're thankful for and they tag people that have sort of guided them. Um, we received one of those this morning. Somebody left us a nice review, and it wasn't somebody that we even know or that we've ever heard of. Um, and Joey Vitale is really good at this about, you know, sort of these gratitude posts where you tag people. I, th I think it could be annoying and overused, but I think it's a great way to get engagement um, and to sort of thank the people that have helped you. And, and I've written those posts. Um, I, I, I think it's a good tool to keep in your toolbox again don't abuse it but i think it's something that can really sort of amplify the kinds of things we were just talking about on the episode which is that positivity and the gratitude yep i i like that one i think uh, anytime you can thank someone for helping you got to get to where you are i think that it, it's a very good thing um my my tip of the week you you sort of hinted at it actually so i've been i've been wanting to do cold plunges for a while and it was funny so amy and i we were we were went out. To, I went to buy like one of those big tubs to do it in, and she was like, "Well, she's like, why are we doing this? Like, I've been watching all these videos online where these people are taking chest freezers and doing it." I said, "What?" And I was a little resistant at first. She's like, "Yeah." She's like, "A lot of." And so we pulled up some videos, and I saw some people how they're doing it. And so I I put together a chest freezer cold plunge, and it's it's really simple. You take you you have a water filter. Um, you have a chest freezer that I got for 175 bucks on Facebook, cleaned it out. And then I got this ink bird that, um, it's a little plug that goes in the wall. And then this temperature probe goes into the freezer and it, once it gets to the, to the optimal temperature that you set it at you, it shuts off, right? So it shuts off the electricity to it. So it doesn't get any colder. Uh, and it's really cool. So, and the way the chest freezer is, is it, it will stay at that same temperature for days, if you keep the lid closed, it's, it's incredible how long it will stay at that same temperature. So the amount of time that it's actually on, it's very, very minimal, but, um, I did it. I did it this morning. Um, it's the feeling, uh, I'm not even gonna list all the benefits that you get from a chest, from doing a cold plunge, but you should just, just Google it. It's, it's quite amazing. The, the high that you get from it, um, from the dopamine and it, 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 it's a sustained high. It's not one of those things where it's like temporary. It actually lasts throughout the day. It's really, really cool. So I uh, highly recommend it. If you, if you thought about it, you don't have to do a deep freeze one, but it's the, you do a cold plunge if you've not done it before. Really recommend it. What temperature do you keep the water at? So mine's at, I've got it down to, I started it in, in the high fifties. I'm now at 55 and it, 55 may not seem like it's like to some people, whenever I heard the temperatures, like that doesn't sound very cold when you're in it, it's freaking, it's freaking cold. So my goal is to get it down to 50 is my goal. And, and how long do you stay about in? halfway there? How long do you stay in? Say it again. How long do you stay in? All right. So I'm up to three minutes, All right, I started at one minute. Um, uh, and then now I'm up to three minutes. Uh, I, I think I'll probably end up getting to the point where I'm, I'll, I'll be done around 10 minutes, but the, what the real, the real point is where you should stop is where you start to shiver. 
because if you start to shiver your the benefits uh, that's you've now you've now achieved all the benefits that you're going to get out of it so it doesn't matter if it's 30 seconds or two minutes or whatever when you start to shiver is whenever you should start to get out because then that's where the benefits start to you don't you, there's no more returns on your body and staying in there if you stay in longer than than uh when you start shivering so that's really when you should stop but i have you done one ever yeah yeah i've gone to those cryo cryo, cryo places cryo um, okay gotcha and I, I, when I read the Jim Quick book, I did some cold showers for a while, but I sort of moved on from that. Yeah, well, and with with that, there is there is some there's some uh, research that says that a cold shower is going to give you just as much of a benefit as a cold plunge. Um, so that if 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 you're wanting to just do cold showers, you can do it. But I can tell you, I've done cold showers. We did cold, cold showers because of seventy five hard, because the the different phases we went through. I can tell you it it's not even comparable the, the the energy you get from the cold plunge versus the the cold shower a lot better. So All right man, uh good talk to you. I'll talk to you more later.